Hallelujah. And we're going to continue on our series this morning on the joy of the Lord. And as the subtitle this morning is kind of strange, but hey, that's what the Holy Spirit gave me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I have learned over the years never to argue. You know, before, when the Lord puts something in my heart, I will analyze it. I will tell God why the topic is not right and why it has to be something else. Then I will waste a lot of time trying to receive from God when he already told me something that I didn't receive. And then I spent like maybe four times the time I should have spent <laughs> to receive the message. So I know better right now. Praise God. So when the Holy Spirit gives it to me, I just say, yes, sir. Hallelujah. And I trust him. So the, the subtopic for today is forget your past. Forget your past with semicolon. Trust in God's word for the moment. Forget your past. Trust in God's word for the moment. God wants somebody seated here to hear this. And don't tell me, I, I, you know, pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't know what my, how can I forget my past? You can. God will not tell you to do what you cannot do. If God tells you to do it, you are able to do it. The only thing that you need to do is to be willing. Because God will not override your will. When God told Cain and Abel to make sacrifice to him at the beginning of the time, he knew they could do it. They had the ability to do it. They had what it takes for them to follow the instruction that God gave them. But one of them was willing to do it and the other one was not willing. God was not able to override the will of Cain. God has never overridden a man's will right from the time of Adam and Eve. And he will not start to do it now. Praise God. Hallelujah. When God told Adam and Eve, don't touch this tree, he knew that they had the ability not to touch that tree. They don't have any excuse. Because if they do, then God is not just. But God is just. He's a just God. Is always right. When he said, don't touch it, it's because they can say no, even to the serpent. So when they didn't say no to the serpent, it was a choice. But I know that the enemy is not happy about this message. But if we go forth and we, we all receive, including everybody that is listening on Facebook and those, anyone whatsoever that will listen to this message at any point in time you will receive. Because when God sent forth a word in season for a reason, there is power in that word to accomplish what God is sending it out for. The, this is the spirit of the word is going out this morning. To set you free from the bondage that the enemy wants to use to hold you back. Whatever it takes God to, to make you to forget your past, he will do it. That's one thing with God. All that God needs is your will. Once you are willing, forget about how you are going to do it. Forget about it. He is able. That's why we need to abide in the vine. Have you ever seen the branches wondering how they will get leaves? The branch of a tree is wondering how will my leaves come? Have you ever seen it before? As long as that branch is on the, on the, on the stem and is on the root, the leaves will come in their season. Praise the Lord. The Bible says when you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. There is no obedience without willingness. Tell your neighbor, there is no obedience without willingness. So it starts with willingness. If you are not willing to do what God is telling you to do, you cannot obey. And if you cannot obey, you cannot obtain. And it cannot be well for a disobedient person. Cannot. If you like, do dry fast. 
if you like fast for 365 days in a year, the only thing that that fast can do for you is to make you to be willing. If that hurdle is not crossed, the fasting will do nothing. Prayer will do nothing. I want somebody to listen very attentively this morning. The beginning of your breakthrough is for you to forget your past. If you want it to be good for you in life, if you want to accomplish anything in life, if you want to prosper and grow and achieve your goal and your vision and your mission, forget your past. And I'm not standing here saying it's easy. Because listen, you might sit down there and think you have some sorry story. Let me tell you something. If we choose to turn this meeting to a sorry story time, believe me, by this time tomorrow, we will still be here. Not just sitting down doing nothing. Being busy, listening to the sorry story that we all have to tell. Do you understand what I'm saying? We all have sorry stories. I have plenty of it. Maybe I have more than everybody that is sitting here. You just might find it difficult to believe me. You might not believe me because I choose to forget. And the more I choose to forget, the more the enemy is bringing it in my face. But last Sunday, we already said that the kingdom of God suffers violence. You must fight. It starts with willingness. But after you are willing, get ready to fight. Because the enemy knows that as long as you live in the past, there is no future. In fact, there is no presence. So he's going to fight to and nail. But thank God. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in us. All we need to do is be in agreement with God. And that's what obedience is. Look, obedience is not one big name. Break it down. Be in agreement with God. That's it. If God is saying something, you are saying the same thing. God is willing something, you are willing the same thing. God is doing something, you are doing the same thing. That's obedience. Total and complete obedience. But if God is saying something, and you are saying another thing, it does not matter what explanation you give to it, it is rebellion. No, we don't want to hear it, but that is the truth. If God is saying something and you are saying another thing, you are in rebellion and anybody that is in rebellion cannot receive anything from God. So in short, what is the Lord saying here? Get out of rebellion, let me help you. There is help in God. There is balm in Gilead. There is physician in the house of the Lord. So when we live in the house of the Lord as if God is not present, it's not God's fault. In fact, he hurts the heart of the father. And the, those that are fathers here, you understand what I'm saying. When you have everything available for your children, and you see them because of their activities and because of their action, that they are denying themselves of this thing that you have made available for them, it hurts your heart. The father is hurting because he sees his children suffering. And God is saying, I don't want you to suffer no more. Let me help you. But for God to help you, you need to humble yourself, listen to what he has to say to you, obey instruction and follow it. Praise the Lord. And when I stand here, I tell you to forget about your past. I'm not just talking about the past of when you were a baby. Say, oh, when I was a baby in Nigeria. Yes, that is the past. But God is telling you that one, the past of 10 years' time, 
they passed of five years time, they passed of three years time, they passed of two years time, uh, passed, one year passed, last month, yesterday, everything is passed. And God is saying, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. And the reason why I'm laying it out like that is that some of us, we are struggling to forget the thing that happened in 10 years. But the enemy is wearing something from yesterday. And as you are detangling yourself from the 10 years ago, something is hooking you down from yesterday. The devil is a liar. That's why it's got to be all. Forget the past. Our text is taken from the book of Isaiah this morning. Isaiah chapter 43. Verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of hold. Why? There is a reason. There is a reason why God is saying forget the past. Because there is something that God is working on and he wants you to have it, and you cannot have that thing as long as you are holding to the past. Verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's an example that God is given. Because even now, I'm going to read it to you in the message translation. Because sometimes it's difficult to get King James. Message says, forget about what has happened. Forget about what has happened. Yes, that won't happen. And that won't happen. And this won't happen. And that's what, oh, miserable life. God said, forget about what has happened. Don't keep going over old history. Don't keep going over it. Don't keep talking about it. Don't keep thinking about it. Don't keep meditating about it. When you have, when you sit down, you put your, your hand like this and your head like this. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? God says, stop it. Now, look at the way uh, the Message Bible put verse 19. He says, be alert. Somebody say, be alert. Be, be present. Say, be present. be present. I'm about to do something that is brand new. Look, when we dwell in the past, we cannot be alert to God. When we dwell in the past, you cannot be present with God. He's speaking, you are not even hearing. And when you hear it, you are not receiving it. You must let go. So what are we saying this morning? Which I will keep saying over and over and over and over again until the end of this ministration. Remember not. Do not recall in your mind those past experiences of yours. Do not retain in your memory. Erase it. You have the power to do that. Just as you have the power to be thinking over and over and over again and just be ruminating about it, you also have the power to erase it in your memory. And you will do it. The Holy Spirit is going to help you. God will give you a willing heart. Every stony heart in this place this morning is broken down by the word of the Almighty. The Bible says the word of the Lord is like a hammer. It breaks into pieces the rock. Every rocky and stony heart this morning, I command to be broken by the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, you will be helped this morning. Because you find yourself in this place this morning, you will be helped. In the name of Jesus. Do not keep in your mind your past. Do not dwell. Don't dwell. Some people are sitting here. But they are living in their past, dwelling in the past, sinking into the ocean of the past. 
But that's what the past does. Drown you. But that is ending today. Don't cling to your past. Release it. And then lastly, stop telling it. Stop telling it. The more you tell it, the more you give any power to stay in your memory. The more you tell it, you know, how do we memorize the word of God? How do we write the word of God in our hearts? Can someone tell me? With your tongue, right? So, if you want your past to stay with you, continue to talk about it. But if you are willing to let it go, you stop talking about it. And I'm not saying it's easy. Because I can tell you when you leave this place today, unconsciously you want to pick up the phone, call a friend and start talking. <laughs> That's when you check yourself and say, that one is past. I'm not doing it anymore. Anytime you feel like that, just start worshiping God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Or start talking about the promises of God. The now thing that God said he's going to do. Start saying it. Call somebody and say, do you know what God said he's going to do? <laughs> say it. They will, they will hear and say, what's wrong with this one? Say, yes, God said he's going to do it. That is breakthrough. We we put the word of the Lord and the promises of God in our mouth and anticipate it with joy and you will see it happen because God is faithful. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible says, consider not. Consider not. Because it said, you don't remember, then don't consider. What does it mean to consider? Don't think carefully about it. Don't contemplate on it. Don't reflect on it. Don't brood over it. Then you brood or you think over and over and over. Stop it. You cannot be in two places at the same time. Is there anybody here that can be in two places at the same time? You can be home and be in church. If, there, if anybody raises your hand, it's deliverance time. We need to minister <laughs> deliverance to you. What am I saying? You cannot be in your past and be present with God. So God is saying, choose now. What do you want? You want to stay in that rot, in the mud, not advancing, sinking, or do you want something new? If you want something new, drop the past. Come to the present. And I know we are all obedient here. Everybody wants good things for yourself. This is the beginning of it. Job chapter 9, verse 27. Job Chapter 9, verse 27. I'm going to read this in the Amplified Version because it explains it better. Job said, If I say I will forget my complaint, then I will leave off my sad appearance and be cheerful and bright enough. <laughs> Praise God. You cannot get over sadness. You cannot get over depression. You cannot get over sorrow except you let go of that complaint because of what happened in the past. We have been doing the teaching on the joy of the Lord. And some people have heard all my preaching, but in their heart, they are like, how can I have the joy of the Lord? How? Because you, you just can't. How can you cannot have it with the past? The beginning of you having the joy of the Lord is let go of your past. Because those sorrowful things, when you live in it, when you ruminate over it, when you think about it over and over again, there is no cheerfulness, there is no brightening of your days. But Job said, I will. Somebody say, I will. I will forget. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to forget today. You will forget your complaint. You will forget those past incidents. You forget. And trust me, when you forget, is the beginning of cheerfulness and brightness in your life. Things will begin to change. 
and he will in the name of Jesus. God is about to work some miracles in the life of many people here. But that miracle, do you know, why do the Bible call miracle works? You know, if you go through the gifts of the Spirit, and the Bible wanted to talk about miracle, it says, walking miracles, right? Walking. Because miracle needs to be walked. It must be walked. There is something that leads to it. Otherwise, everybody, we have miracles. Even when Jesus Christ was walking on the face of the earth, it was not everybody that encountered Jesus that got miracles. Some people walked it. Some people did not. This is the working of the miracle in your life that God is telling you the know-how this morning. Forget your past. If you are willing to do that and to work at it, you are starting to work some miracles in your life. <laughs> Praise God. And it will happen in the name of Jesus. Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11 from 15 to 19. He said, For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and thou shalt not fear. Look at 16. Why? Why will there be steadfastness? Why will there be no fear? Because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as water that pass away. If you must live out of fear, and if you must be steadfast in your trust in God, you must forget. Thou shalt forget thy mystery and remember it as water that pass away. 17. And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday, and thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning. That's what's going to happen to you. Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm challenging everybody here today. You just choose to forget your past and walk, walk towards it. Start looking at yourself in the mirror every morning. I'm telling you, you start looking more beautiful. Yes, it even affects physical appearance. It does. Your face will begin to change. Everything around you will begin to change. You become more productive. Things that used to be difficult for you before will become easy. You know, if you've been experiencing bad luck, in quotes, you know how some people, it will always work out for others, never for you. This is one of the roots. This is one of the roots. Verse 18. And thou shalt be secure because there is hope. <laughs> Tell your neighbor there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. You finally have a peace of mind. You finally know what it means to be at rest. Amen. Verse 19. Also, thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. No more fear. No more worries. When you are lying down all by yourself, it's no worry time for you anymore. It's praise time. It's worship time. It's thanksgiving time. We will all get there in the name of Jesus. Amen. We shall be willing, we shall be obedient, and we will eat the good of the land. Amen. The Holy Spirit will help us. He is a paracletos. That's why Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit. Because he knows that even when we are willing sometimes, we might not have the wherewith to perform. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. So we need to be alert. We need to be present. We need to have an understanding of what God is doing at this moment. And we need to have an understanding of what God is saying at this moment. And we can only hear. We can only see. We can only understand after we step out of our past. And we are present. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May we all be present in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 21. Very familiar story of the father of faith, Abraham. Abraham did what the Lord is telling us to do now. There came a time in his life he stepped out of his past. He stepped out of his past. And he began to be present with God. Present with what God said to him at that moment. And what God said to him at that moment made more meaning to him than what he experienced in his past. We, we must get there. Verse 19 says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not. Somebody says considered not. He, re he decided to forget that his body was dead. I think that's the most difficult thing to do. It's most difficult for you to forget something that is in your body. You know, it's easy to not think about something than to not see what is present in your body. That's why a lot of people find it difficult to receive their healing. Because they are constantly seeing what their body is telling them. But even with that, it is possible to forget because we already have a pace setter in the Bible. If Abraham was able to do it, you can do it. Somebody say, if Abraham can do it, I can do it. This is a better dispensation. This is a better covenant. And we have the help of the Holy Spirit. We can do it. The Bible says he considered not his body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He forgot about or he stepped out of that. He staggered not at the promise of God. You see, because he stepped out of that, he was able to hear the promise. He was able to receive the promise and then he held on to the promise instead of the past. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, doing what? Giving glory, the joy of the Lord. You can't express the fullness of the joy of the Lord if you are still holding on to your past. Because when you hold to the past, you cannot trust in the word for the moment that the Lord is speaking to you. And verse 21 says, I'm being fully persuaded that what he has promised he was able also to perform. He didn't care about the past anymore. What matters to him now is what does he hear the Lord. What is the Lord saying to me right now? That is what needs to be a concern. That is what your concern, that is what you should wake up in the morning and think about. When you wake up in the morning, what is God saying to me now? In the afternoon, what is God saying to me now? In the night, what is God saying to me now? All those time that you used to spend to think about the past, use it to say, what is God saying now? <laughs> Praise God. Because God is saying some things, which is the pathway to deliverance and freedom. How can you go through a pathway when you can hear? But we will hear in the name of Jesus. We get to that before the end of this message. John chapter 5. From verse 6 to 9. John chapter 5 from verse 6 to 9. We've seen this example of Abraham. This is another example. This is a paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda. This man remembered his past all the time. And you see the devil helped him because he really didn't have any other thing to do but to lay down there. So he spent 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, remembering his past. And as long as he stood doing that, he laid there for how long? 38 years. Praise God. Nobody wants to be in a spot for 38 years. I don't want it. In fact, I don't want to linger longer beyond today. And it is possible. And that is what I want everybody here to determine in your mind. Have a determination. My, my lingering in the rut will not go past this morning. Praise God. That man was sitting by the pool. 
thinking about his past. Up to the point that when Jesus Christ walked up to him, he was so much in the past, he didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus is talking. Holy Spirit is talking. We don't hear. We don't understand. It doesn't make any, any sense to us because our thoughts and our mind is full of the past. John chapter 5 from verse 6. I'm going to read. When Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? The invalid answer, I can't. Is that a response to the question? Is it? No. From the best of my understanding, if somebody asks you, do you want, you will either say yes or no. But he was so stuck in his past. That was all he could think about. Why? Because anytime the angel comes down to trouble the water, somebody had done there before me, I'm never, that is his story. Tell your neighbor, change your story. Or at least be quiet. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the mercy of Jesus Christ. Jesus just pretended like he didn't hear him. He said, pick up your bed. Praise God. The sick man said, I can't. And he didn't stop at that. He started to tell his story. Storytelling time. The story of sorrow and the story of woe. Gloomy story. Which we all have. But we are not telling anymore. In the name of Jesus. In fact, we are not remembering it anymore. Because by choice, we choose to forget. This is a new beginning of life. A new dawn. God has something better for us. Just like Jesus had something better for this man. Jesus said, stand up, roll up your sleeping mat, and go home. God wants to speak into your life. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. That's what is at stake. Look, listen to me. Listen. Something is at stake. Because you might sit down there and say, yeah, I don't want to forget my past. Something is at stake. I don't want to lose out. This man has suffered 38 years. He almost lost out. I'm not standing here saying that you have not suffered. Yes, you have suffered. I have suffered. But God wants to bring a change and that is what is at stake. We cannot lose out. We cannot lose out of the present. Because of our past. God have spoken to us this year. Listen. And I'm saying this because the Holy Spirit said I should say it. When we declare this year and say this is a year of restoration. Don't sit there and say oh they've come again and said something. Because something must be said. You understand what I'm saying? Every year something must be said. They, if this is not something, God says it. This is thus says the Lord. You better have to sit tight and take it serious because that is at stake. Something is at stake. If you want restoration, if you want God to change the situation around, if you want God to bring that which your heart has been yearning for, which you desire, because this paralyzed man by the pool wanted to be healed so badly. That's why he did not stay in his house. He was sitting by the pool side. But in spite of that, his situation did not change. He was stuck in his past. If you want a change, do something. That's what I'm saying. Because God wants to speak to your situation and bring a solution. And let me tell you something. 
The solution that God is bringing, you can't see it and you can't know it. Because we sit down there and you want to imagine, okay, this is the way he's going to do it. He will do this, he will do that, he will do this. No, that's not the way he's going to do it. He will do it his own way. A way that you cannot imagine. But he can't do it without you activating it. Let go of the past. Let joy come back to you and start to anticipate. When Peter saw that lame man by the gates when he was going into the temple, what did he say? He said, look on us. Why? Because that lame man was stuck in his past. Because his story is that when they wake up in the morning, somebody will pick him up and put him at the front of the, of the church so that people that were passing by will give him some money. That was his expectation. That was his story. But on that faithful day, God wanted to do something. And he needed to listen to what Peter had to say. Peter said, look on us. And then he started to make the declaration. God wants to make some declaration in your life. And he said, look on me. You cannot look at two places at the same time. If you're looking at your past, God wants your attention. Take your eyes away from your past. Look on God. And see him do the seemingly impossible. Great God, mighty, 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 mighty God. All things are possible with him. Amen. With, with men, it is impossible. Yeah, all these years with a sad story, we pull this, we pull that, we try this, we, it's, it's, it, it didn't happen. But with God, all things are possible. Psalm 77, Psalm 77, I'm going to read from verse 2 to 6, I will read from the message translation, Psalm 77. He said, I found myself in trouble and when looking for my Lord, my life was an open wound that wouldn't heal. When friends said, Everything will turn out all right. I didn't believe a word they said. So, look, don't say it's only me that is going through this. The psalmist went through it at some period of time in his life and he had to snap out of it himself. Look, he carried an open wound. He's not talking about uh, ulcer in the flesh. Right? The wound of the heart. And his friend tried to console him while he was remembering about the past. And he said, no, no, no. I can't believe everything you are saying. He said, I remember God and shake my head. I bow my head, then wring my hands. I'm awake all night, not a wink of sleep. I can't even say what is bothering me. I go over the days one by one. What days? He's past. He's past. He was lying down there on the bed, going through his past one by one. I ponder the years gone by. I trump my lute all through the night, wondering how to get my life together. We think about our past and we think it is done. It's like, look, the damage has been done. The psalmist experienced it. So he said, he was wondering, how with this, how can I put this life together again? How? His friend said to him, you'll be okay. He said, I don't believe you. Have we heard about the story of Umpty Dumpty? We know the story, right? 
Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Every influential person gathered together. So let's put Humpty Dumpty together again. Were they able to do it? When most of us think about our past, that is what we, that's what the devil is telling us in our heart. But what I want to tell you this morning is that there is somebody, not a man, but God that can put Humpty Dumpty together again. That's what I'm telling you. There is a way out. There is a solution. But God is saying, for me to be able to do it, let go of your past. Because as long as you are still holding to that past, I can help you. When we spend our time like that, thinking about the past, one, we cannot have joy. That's just the truth. Don't, don't be coming here and telling me the joy of the Lord when, when you're thinking about those things. It's a, that's just the truth. You cannot have joy, one. You cannot trust God because you're not even hearing him. All that is in your mind is what has happened to you, what is going on, how your life has been damaged, how it can never be fixed again. Mm -hmm. Number three, you cannot have faith. Because if you don't trust, there's no faith. There's no joy. You can't have faith without joy. They work together. When you have an assurance, hey, come on, you are joyful. When you already sign, if you want to buy a house, you sign a contract already. The person that owned the house is still living there. What do you do? You start calling all your friends that you bought a house. I mean, that's it. Because you trust. Because you have faith in what you have done already. So, if you really have faith, you will have joy. When there's no joy, there's no faith. So I've given four, five, you cannot move forward. There's no way forward. This to frustration. We get stuck in the rut. And that's why God is coming to help us to take out of, or, or, us out of that rut. And he will. For faith is now. Now. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith, now. We do away with our past. We step into the presence. Let's go back to Psalm, Psalm 77. And I want us to listen attentively to this. I'm going to read from verse 13 to 15. I will read from the New Living Translation so that it is easy for us. I want to tell you something about God. And I want you to hear that today. Take it home with you. Think about it over and over. Meditate upon it. Say it with your mouth. Verse 13, it says, Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nation. By your strong arm, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. God is strong. God is powerful. God is able. God can put Humpty Dumpty together again. And I will tell you how. Let's go further down. Verse 19 and 20. Your road led through the sea. Your pathway through the mighty waters. Now I want you to underline this. A pathway no one knew was there. Praise God. When God was about to deliver the children of Israel, he took them through the Red Sea. When they got to the edge of the sea, God already had his way in the Red Sea, but the people didn't see it. 
I will say it again. When they got to the brink of the sea, there was a way in that sea, but the people didn't see it. And because they didn't see it, what did they do? They were afraid. They were crying. Why were they afraid? Because they remember their past. Do you know how many times Pharaoh have said you can go and he called them back? So when they got to the brink of the Red Sea, to them it has happened again the way that it has always happened. Pharaoh is coming again to take them back. Because when they look in front of them, the Red Sea was there. When they looked behind them, they saw Pharaoh's army coming. So they are like, oh yeah, we are slaves forever. It, it has happened to them too many times. But the Bible says, God had a way in that pathway that nobody saw. What am I telling somebody here today? I'm telling you that God has a solution to that issue that is bothering you now. I'm not saying he's going to create the solution. I'm saying he has it today as I'm talking. You just don't see it. You just don't see it. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way. No matter how messed up the situation is. God's way was already in the water. His pathway was there. No man can see it, but God saw it. Listen. When the Israelites moved forward. The pathway was not there yet. I'll say it again. When the Israelites, you know, because when Moses went to God and started complaining, what did God say? Move forward. Move forward. Where do you want? There is water. No, there is a pathway in the water. There is a solution to that problem. You just have not seen it. And the reason why you have not seen it is one, you are stuck in your past. Two, you can't focus on God to hear what he's saying. God wants to help us. And the help of God will never come to us in a way that we can process. Trust me. If you had called on all the Israelites and said, how will you get to the promised land? And every one of us start telling you the imagination of their mind. No, none of them would ever have said it the way God took them. Not even Moses. Because to be honest with you. When Moses was at the river by the Red Sea also, he was concerned. He was like, okay, God, come on. What are you doing? Because he didn't see the pathway. God wants us to know that he has a solution to everything. He's not going to try to get a solution. He has it now. There is a pathway. There is a pathway in that river no one knew was there. Nobody knew that that pathway was there except God. The King James put it, he said, thy way is in the sea. And that path in the great world. Of course, the way of God is not, it's not like the way of God is always in the sea. But at that particular time, God already had a map 
in that sea, how he will take his children from that point to the end. But they didn't see it. And because they did not see it when they got there, instead of them to be rejoicing, because they are moving ahead and they are moving forward and they are closer to the promised land, they started to complain. They started to worry. They started to cry. They started to weep. God is about to show you a way out. Verse 20. You led your people along the road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherd. What road? God's road in the midst of the water. There is a way of escape. There is a road. There is a solution. God only knows it. God only sees it. But he will show it to us when we connect to him, when we set our eyes on him, when we set our expectation on him, and we cannot do that if we still carry the past and think about it and meditate about it and ruminate about it. God is restoring. God is restoring. And this is the see the Lord. I'm not encouraging you this morning. I'm telling you that God said, I will restore you. They, they are, they are two different things. You know, I might see you that you need encouragement and come to you and give you encouragement. This is not encouragement. This is God telling you, I want to restore you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 42 verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. They are already present. I'm telling you, before your eyes see them, the pathway in the, in the Red Sea was already there. It was there. Before God told Moses, stretch your rod forward, it was already there. That's why he said, move forward. What's wrong with you? Why are you standing still? Move forward. Praise the Lord. God is telling somebody today, forget your past. Come to the present with the Lord. Receive the word that God is giving to you right now. And in anticipation to that which God has promised you, start to rejoice. Let's stand on our feet.